Hey, welcome to Rock Talk with Jackie Neal. I'm going to be talking with all kinds of entertainers, musicians, artists, comedians, singers, songwriters, bands about their life, their career, their inspirations, their philosophies. I'd love for you to subscribe, like, and leave us a review. I got the great opportunity to speak with Karen Woodward and Sarah Dolan, the two members of Banana Rama, celebrating 40 years this year and their 12th studio album, Masquerade, out July 22nd. Hi, Jackie. Hey, Karen and Sarah. Thank you so much for taking the time. I am so excited. I know we have a lot of ground to cover and not much time, so you want to just dive in? Okay. Thanks for having us on. Your 12th album out today, Masquerade. It is beautiful in every way, musically, lyrically. I love the album photography and artwork and the videos. It's just gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thanks. We really did spend a lot of time um, getting this one right. Even, you know, the writing, um, the way the direction of of everything was going to go. We were sort of hands-on in the studio with our producer, Ian Masterson, and a friend of ours who is an artist, um, and has done uh, video directing in the past. He did the artwork, um, and then he he was renovating a castle in uh, Puglia, so that's where we shot the video in Italy. Um, yeah, it's just been a really great time to work on something. I think because we were in a lockdown over here, we had time to focus. We were lucky enough to have a focus during the pandemic. And um, so I think, you know, there's a little bit of nostalgia there. And um, it's a really cohesive album, I think. And I love that you keep that 80s kind of electro pop vibe. But technology, it's given it a modern take. I've been on this side of the microphone almost as long as you ladies have been doing what you're doing, celebrating 40 years. And I know technology has made everything easier. Oh, absolutely. I mean, particularly, you know, the, the recording side of it, which used to be done on tape and cut up and spliced together I mean to be able to just do things and and listen to it and change things immediately or try things immediately uh, without having to sort of go back the next day and see how it sounds is is just amazing for us and it, it makes for a really productive environment being in the studio these days very creative environment and I also think uh, back in the days spend a fortune hiring out these studios to record and now everything can be done at home or kids just do it in their bedroom and I think with social media it can reach more people. Um, Karen and I have our own record label and so we self-release now which is fantastic because we've obviously got collected enough people around us that we've always worked with to sort of on the promotion side of things so we really are the sort of masters of our own you know destiny and um, you know that's been great and we actually own our own music now. I love that. Yeah, I'm actually speaking to you this morning from my home studio in my closet. So I totally understand. And <laughs> <laughs> I remember the days so many times back in the day I screamed, cussed, and threw a splicing block across the room because the real to real editing, I hated it. I totally understand what yeah. you're saying. Now, when you first started out, you weren't just a label generated girl band. You wrote your own songs, you styled yourselves, even though you say now your styling has come a lot further than when you started. You did it and you're still doing it. And I can also totally relate to men in the business telling you what you couldn't do. And you proved everybody wrong and you're still doing it. Yeah, well, I think we had each other as backup because we've been friends for so long and we had each other's backs and we were very, very determined. But I do think we had to work sort of twice as hard um, both to just, you know, get the respect we deserved, that we felt we deserved, in fact, get any respect. I think, you know, it was a very sexist business and probably still is, but we don't have to encounter it now because we do everything ourselves. We we didn't take no for an answer, but it was quite difficult. The way you go about it is just brilliant. And your new memoir out also really saying something, Sarah and Karen, our Bananarama story. The celebrity stories, George Michael, Robert De Niro, people can get the book and read about those. I know everybody asks you about those, but I want to concentrate more on your philosophy to stay youthful, to keep laughing, creating, and having fun. I just love that. And I love the quote, as much as Sarah and I were particularly about our appearance, the main aim was, and still is today, to have as much fun as possible. And it shows. It just shows in everything you do. Yeah, I mean, I think we grew up together, so we have that shared history. You know, we've we've been on bike rides and fairgrounds and first <laughs> clubbing experiences. You know, everything we do, we have that shared background. So it makes us very strong as a unit. 
but also we've been really fortunate and lucky enough to, to make music for 40 years and then you travel the world with your best friends so we do realize how lucky we are but it's something that we do and you know it's a, it's a business but it's it has its serious side, but for, for us, we need laughter and fun, and, and that's definitely what we strive for in what we do. A song off the album that I really love as well is Favorite. How did those lyrics come about? Uh, Favorite is actually a song written by Sarah's daughter, Alice D, who's an artist in her own right, and she had it, she's had a few EPs that she's um, self released, and it was a huge, huge favorite song of Sarah and I. And we just decided we wanted to cover it and maybe hopefully bring it, bring her songwriting talents to other people's attention. Um, I think it's an amazing song, always have. She writes such great lyrics and um, her version is very R&B and very different. And she's got the most beautiful, sort of soulful voice, very different from our voices. Um, not that I'm putting us down, but, you know, it's just, <laughs> just a different. Very different genre that she normally records in. But she was involved in writing a few songs on the album. Now... Going way back, I read that your first demo tape was in Swahili. You want to tell us about that one? Yes, I, I'm not sure. It was like a disco song. I didn't really know it. I think Siobhan um, had it in her record, record collection. And uh, so we, did, we didn't obviously speak Swahili, so we learned it phonetically. <laughs> um, it was played by um, Radio One, the big uh, radio station over here, BBC Radio One. And um, it, it was picked up by Terry Hall, who was in the specials and then became the Fun Boy 3 um, and he asked us to sing on his album and um, with, with the Fun Boy 3 um, and from that came It Ain't What You Do the first single and then after that they sang back up on our song Really Saying Something so yeah that, that little demo kind of propelled us into uh, future stardom I guess Now who besides each other has been your greatest friends and supporters in the industry through these 40 years? I mean, for the last sort of ten years, we've had our, our sort of faithful producer Ian Masterson. He does so much for us, and um, you know, he's very understanding of us and, and open to all our suggestions. And it's great to have that sort of partnership. I mean, going through the forty years, um, really, the only two left standing are the two of us mm-hmm. <laughs> from the very beginning. We have friends who we've got. We have a great team around. We have a fabulous team, a lot of whom we've worked with over the the past 10, 15 years. But we have friends, and we've stayed friends with a lot of people from the early days, um, but they're not necessarily involved in what we do anymore. Are there things about each other that still surprise you after being friends for more than 40 years? Just the energy we have. (laughs) It's just, you know... It, it takes a lot to kind of keep going in this business because it, it is hard at, at times. But, um, yeah, we still have a, an energy for it and uh, a real appreciation and respect for each other. Now, is there going to be a tour in support of this album? I hope you say yes. Um, well, currently, because of our um, festival schedule over here, we're doing two sort of album launch shows in London, which we're squeezing in in a couple of weeks. Um, because of COVID, we haven't really thought about taking the tour elsewhere or doing the shows elsewhere at the moment. But it's definitely something we're thinking about for next year. Um, hopefully every, the COVID thing will have completely died down now and we can get back out internationally on the road. I sure would love it if you girls would come across the pond and <laughs> tour over here. It would be fantastic. Yeah. I know I need to let you both go, but what is one thing that your fans don't know about you both and your music, but that you want them to know? I think they know everything. Do you know what? They know more than we know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I use them as my memory now. Yeah. And like when, if I'm on stage, I said this is released in 2005, and I don't know 2007. I love it. Well, listen. I love your accent as well. I do love that. And I love your accent as well. I think Brits and Texans, we just have a definite affinity for each other. I'm sorry, so we do indeed. Masquerade out today. Karen and Sarah, thank you so much for speaking with us. Continued success, and we'll see you down the road. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for tuning in to Rock Talk with Jackie Neal.